Right. I have put in the vise a D3ST hook. <coughs> I'm going to tie in my thread. And because I like to tie a fly with which I will fish, which I will use, I like that fly to be substantial and solid and to stand catching a few fish. So when I tie the thread in, I'm going to leave the trailing end as an extra fibre for ribbing the body. Then I just wind quickly down towards the tail of the hook, doesn't matter if you make some open turns. Then tie in your ribbing tinsel, this is more decorative than functional, and I'm tying it in on the opposite side of the hook so that when I start to wind it over the hackle, it doesn't twist back over the first piece too much. Catch him in on the other side of the hook. So it lies in the natural place to make the first turn and catch the hackle in. Wind your silk to the level with the point of the hook so that the silk is hanging level with the point of the hook. I'm going to tie in a single fibre of wool first of all and just wind that up through. And I'm going to stop about a third of the way up the body. Just wind this wool to form the thin tapering end of the body and I'm closing the turns up a little bit as I go so the body is naturally thickening just a little bit. Then I'm going to tie that off. Chop off his end and then tie in the other two fibres, the other two strands. So the front two thirds of the body ends up a little thicker a little bit more substantial. And I'm also going to stop quite a long way back from the eye of the hook. The most classic mistake that any people make, anybody makes when tying flies, is they never give themselves quite enough room when they get to the eye of the hook. And if they've got to put in a hackle and a wing and perhaps cheeks or something like that and, and tie in the body materials first of all, they end up short of space. And that's very easy to do, and it means you just end up with a little fat head that's all falling over the eye. I still do it now on occasion. Everybody does. It's, it's, so it's so easy to do. So easy to do. Now, I, I've just selected a nice big cock hackle. I'm going to strip away the fibres off the base of the cock hackle. And what I like to do <coughs> is just cut the last couple of fibres with the scissors. To make little teeth. That makes little barbs, and it just gives the silk a little bit of extra grip on that hook. I'm going to tie this hackle feather in, in the classic Vanyard way, holding it my side of the hook and at a complete right angle, with the good side of the feather facing the eye. Take one turn from behind it, around and in front, then bring the stem back and take another turn over it, so I've figurated across this hackle stem, and then I'm going to bend the hackle stem back and do three or four hard tight turns going back towards the bend of the hook and then back forwards again and then out in front of that feather so that hackle stem cannot pull out because there is nothing worse than a fly disintegrating on you halfway through use. Grip the stem of the hackle feather in your hackle pliers. Notice I'm winding the hackle with the silk hanging in front of it so it's out of the way and just wind in nice big open turns. If you don't do fairly open turns, your feather won't be long enough to get you to the bend of the hook. Now the first thing I'm going to tie in is the strand of tying silk that I left trailing. So this will now become quite invisible, but is further reinforcement. These turns are now spiralling and crossing each turn of that hackle feather so it just gives it a little bit more to hold it together because the teeth of the fish and you'll be catching so many on a bumble that the teeth of the fish will be in regular contact with your fly the teeth of the fish can easily break the hackle stem and if your ribbing was to break, if your ribbing tinsel was to break, which is always a possibility um, then your fly is ruined that feather is now secured by the, by the silk, so I can cut the base of the feather off quite happily and it's not going to fall to bits. And then wind the ribbing. As I say, the ribbing is really more decorative than functional. And to make sure you don't tie the hackle fibres down to the base of the hook,
to the body of the hook. Wiggle it a little bit backwards and forwards as you go to work it through those fibres so you don't squash them and reduce their um, fluffy sticking out bits, which is what makes a bumble catcher fish, I think. It's, it's got hairy bits sticking out. Tie over your end of your ribbing tinsel and do three or four good turns because that's necessary to make it nice and stable. And I want a bit of space to work at the head, so I'm going to pull these fibres back and just tie over them a little bit so I've pushed them back. And then I take my prepared teal feather. These are fairly thick stems at the base, but they taper quite rapidly. So if you form a nice compromise by going a couple of fibres further up, so you haven't got the very thickest of the hackle stem to tie in because it makes the fly too bulky. Again, just trim off the last two or three fibres at the base so they form a little barb. Tie it in in exactly the same way, facing forwards, and then go figure of eight over it, and then back towards the bend of the hook for a couple of turns. And now when I wind the hackle, you'll only get a couple of turns out of this feather because it's a fairly short feather. I'm winding the feather back towards the tail of the hook and then the silk will come across it again so it gives the feather stem further reinforcement to prevent it from being damaged by those fish. Now as you wind the teal feather it looks absolutely diabolical. It'll turn back on itself, the fibres stick out all over the place. It looks like an octopus on acid. <laughs> Ignore that for a minute. Just do a couple of turns over the base of the feather so your feather is now secured. Then just trim off the tip of the feather. Then you take your dubbing needle and just tweak these fibres around. And try to get them to break up because they will naturally want to stick to each other. That's the way that feathers are because they've got little tiny barbs along their sides that hold them together. So you try and just tweak that around as much as you can. I'm now going to wind through that hackle towards the eye of the hook, again wiggling the silk backwards and forwards a little bit as I go. And as soon as that silk comes out at the eye of the fly, sweep these fibres back. You've now got space to make the head of the fly. Do a few turns back towards the eye, towards the back of the hook, just tying over the base of those fibres to give them further security and that gives the fly the shape we look for I'm just now going to do a whip finish by hand if you've got a whip finish tool you want to use that do so but I do it with them fingers turn the silk over on itself so you've trapped the end of the thread wind over it three or four turns that just gives it a nice finish and to hold that loop stick your dubbing needle in the loop to maintain the tension pull the end of your silk through some people at this point break the silk and the danger is it'll break underneath itself and the head comes apart. So I like to just cut it, put the scissors right in tight and cut it. And there, gentlemen, you have the Pilks Bumble. Amazing. I will varnish the beast because this is going